Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. I greet you all with the greeting of Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace and the blessing of Almighty Allah be with you all. I'd like to welcome you all for continuation of our series Q&A by Sheikh Al-Albani, rahmatullahi alayhi. Today we have a question number six from tape number 620. Uh, I'm sorry that we have a question number five. Question number five from tape number 620. And the questions uh, Honorable Sheikh, some of the modern uh, Sheikh who had visited us in Australia, they give a fatwa that a money that collected from usury is forbidden for the owner of this money but is lawful for other people how correct is this fatwa or this saying the sheikh rahmatullah alayhi answered by saying what the meaning is alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah praise allah and send peace and blessing on his prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam I wish that somebody said to this Mufti, where is your evidence if you are truthful? That because any fatwa contradict, contradict the statements of the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of Rasulullah وسلم, or the principles of Islamic Sharia, is not acceptable and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has stated in Surah Al-Ma'idah وَتَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْبِرِّ وَالتَّقْوَى وَلَا تَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْإِثْمِ وَالْعِدْوَانِ which the meaning is help one another towards righteousness and do not help one another towards sin and transgression as for a specific statements and the principles of fiqh and sharia we know that the Prophet وسلم, stated something concerning this issue which is Allahu Akil riba May Allah curse the person who devoured the usury and give it to others and the person who recorded and the witnesses. So from this also we see that the Prophet وسلم, had cursed the people who are drinking wine and also had curse also those people who involved in serving preparing uh, carrying it buying it sell it and we can see a lot of these things in the sharia this what you just told me is the first time i hear it and actually the prophet And actually, this prophet, or this what you call it, usually they call it a prophet or income coming from this, is haram for the owner of the property and is not lawful for others. We say whatever been built on a weak foundation or bad foundation the building itself will be weak and corrupted. This is not a correct understanding. For a person to say a Muslim permissible for him to put his property, his money in the bank, and after this he will take the usury and feed it to somebody else. And the la'na and the curse falls on the person from two directions. Number one, he assists the bank. And the second, by putting his money there. And the second way, that he had benefit from the bank and give it to somebody else to utilize it. So this is worse than if he, he himself ate it. As we see that the hadith 
had made the curse to be fallen on the person who is feeding, taking it, and the person who is involved in it, which is the bank. But in this case, it has two different branches. So I'm very sorry to say that most of this fatwa nowadays that we hear it, it perhaps it is a fatwa came from a person with good intention, but he doesn't have the proper knowledge. And those are the people whom the Prophet ﷺ had told us about that indeed Allah doesn't snatch knowledge from the people from their chest and their hearts, but Allah caused this knowledge to disappear by causing the scholars to die. And when no more scholars, the people will elect ignorant leaders and they will ask them questions and they will give fatwa uh, wrong fatwa and by this means they gone astray themselves and cause others to go astray possibility that somebody given such a kind of fatwa to cause the people to deviate from asirat al-mustaqim which is a prophet sallallahu alaihi also had told us about it So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he said do not help one another towards sin and righteousness. This is shows that the person who gives the fatwa doesn't care about the hadith. It doesn't even care for the ayah. And we need this information in a time that we live in a a time that people became a distant from the knowledge and became a stranger. Therefore, a person who makes an riba and usury lawful for others than the owner, as it came in this question, this is contradicting the usul and the furu' the fundamentals of Islam and its branches. What I see in this case, and Allah only knows best, those people who've been afflicted by dealing with, dealing with the bank, and then Allah gives them a sincere tawbah and they repent, now they have one of two choice, choices. Number one, that he will leave the usury, the interest, to the bank. The second case, that he will take the interest without making any profit for himself from it. Neither any specific Muslim to make a profit out of it or a use of it. So now comes the fifth point to show what we can do with this. Here is the Prophet وسلم, in hadith which he reported by Abu Hurairah is saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tayyib wa la yaqbalu illa tayyiba. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is good and he accepts nothing except good and the pure. Therefore, a person who dealt with usury and Allah had blessed him with tawbah and he got the principles of his property is not supposed to benefit from the usury. As Allah stated in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse number 279, وَإِن تُبْتُمْ That if you make a tawbah, you only get the originality, the, your capital only, not any profit, not any addition. So the person have one of this choice, that he will take the capital of his money, and he will leave the usury and the interest to the bank. And if he did so, the bank will make a use out of it. And if he took, took it himself, he also could not use it. Because the previous verses and a hadith. 
which is totally different from what this Mufti had said. So what is left for this person? That he may put it in a project, which is the benefit doesn't go to a specific person. That mean will be the benefit in general for the public. Which is the scholars who call it al marafiq al amma general and public usage. Which is any project, the benefit of it will come to the general public of the Muslims, not for any specific person. As example, like digging a well of water, or uh, fixing a road, or making a bridge over a river for the people to cross over it. And we understand from the principles also of this Sharia and Fuqh that if a Muslim been afflicted with two problems that he will look and they try to take the less sinner, the less sin among them. So in this case, the least of the sin is that the person will take the money from the bank, keep his capital, and utilize the usury money in general public usage for the general community. And the person asked, Sheikh, can we utilize this money to build a mask? And the Sheikh said, no. Thank you for watching. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah knows best.